So this week we're going to recreate an effect I saw in a poster. It was actually for the new movie Tron that's going to be coming up here pretty soon. And it had an interesting representation of simple shapes in a very interesting um, arrangement to give it a very, very kind of high-tech uh, kind of Tron look to it. So we're going to re recreate that effect here. So we will begin. I've got a document. Gone, um, it's already set up to the, roughly the dimensions of a movie poster with a black background layer. So I'm going to go and create a new blank layer to start building our graphics on. So on that blank layer, I'm going to go over here into the toolbar and grab the round, rounded rectangular shape tool here. And inside the document, actually, before we do that, up in the options bar, let's make sure we've got the radius setting up here set to somewhere around 0.2 inches. So it'll give us a simple rounded corner on our rectangular shape. So inside the document here, I'm going to go ahead and draw out a box rectangular shape up here in the upper corner and there's my box right there. So I want to apply a stroke to this path. Well first I need to go ahead and set up the brush tool for the stroke. So we're going to select the brush tool and we're going to use a standard round brush right here. And we're going to have the size here at 10 pixels, hardness at 100% so it's a nice hard edge soft brush. And we'll just go in here and you can see it paints a simple stroke. Now need to change the color. I don't want to necessarily use white, so we're going to go in here in the swatches panel and choose a color for our graphic. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use this RGB cyan color, so I'm just going to check on that. There it is in my foreground color. So now, brush is set, box is in place. Let's go into the paths panel where that shape is and then go into the flyout menu and choose stroke path. Here we're going to select the brush tool, which we've just set up, uh, set up with that brush settings. And now, let's go ahead and click OK, and gives me that simple shape. Now, go ahead and turn off the path. I'm just going to click in the empty area of the path layer there. Back to the layers, let's go ahead and make a duplicate of this shape. I'm just going to nudge it to the side here. Hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, as well as the Shift key, so it just drags the duplicate to the left or right, and nudge that all the way over until it touches the other side. Now we have a new layer for that shape, so I'm just going to go ahead and merge these two layers together by pressing Command or Control E on my keyboard. Next thing is we're going to drag a, another duplicate of these two shapes down. So I'm going to again hold down the Option key and the Shift key and then click and drag down. Click directly on the object and drag down and give those a little bit of spacing in between those. Once again, I'm going to merge these layers together. Simply press Command or Control E and now it ends up all on one layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this entire shape into free transform mode. I press Command or Control T, and I'm going to grab this top middle handle and just drag it down, squashing the overall graphic. Now before I hit OK, zoom out the window here. Keeping it in free transform mode, I'm going to right click on the object and now choose Perspective. And then grab either one of these bottom corner handles and just drag outward. And that's going to expand that shape out in Perspective. There we go. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer by just dragging it down to the new layer icon or press Command or Control J and then take that duplicate layer and just drag it down. Now hold the Shift key down so you can keep it constrained and this is going to be kind of a reflection but I'm going to distort it a little bit. Let's put it in, back in free transform here the reflection layer and let's just scale it back up a little bit so these lines are a little bit more parallel to each other. Maybe drag that one down. There we go. Nudge it down a little bit more. So just give it a simple scaling there just to get the proportions right or the angle right. And then we'll just drop the opacity of this layer down to around 50. Let's go even lower than that. Let's go to around 20. So that's looking pretty good. Well, the next thing I noticed on the, on this, the original poster was there was a horizon line of lights, almost like city lights in the distant background. And all it really is is just a line of dots. So we'll just use a simple brush technique for that. Back to the brush panel here. Let's go ahead and open up the brush options. I'm just going to use that same rounded brush, but I'm going to drop the size down to 5. And let's go into the shape dynamics and have the size jitter over here all the way up set up to 100. And we're going to activate scattering. Scattering I'm going to put at around 50% and the count at around 2. Now look, so it doesn't look so clumpy, let's go back into the brush tip shape section and increase this spacing here quite a bit. Let's go into around 300 there. Now, of course, using that same teal color on a new blank layer, we can paint across and get that horizon line. If you add the shift, uh, shift key as you drag, if I'm just going to hold down the shift key and start on the outside edge and just drag across, 
gives me that horizon line. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Let's continue on. Now the last part of this, or one of the last parts was this large round graphic uh, that was up top. I think it's supposed to represent like the, the Frisbee weapon that's in the movie. So to do that, it's a simple, almost a simple spirograph shape. So what we're gonna do is again, create a new blank layer. And again, we're gonna, well this time we're gonna use the, the elliptical marquee tool and then just draw out a perfect circle shape. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just drag out a circle in the upper area of the image here. And we're gonna go ahead and give this selection a stroke. I'm gonna go under the edit menu, go down here to stroke. Using the same color, it's assuming the uh, foreground color here. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. Set the width to one pixel and the uh, location to the inside. Click OK. So there's our shape. Well, I wanna make sure it's in the center of my layout here. So I'm gonna do a command A to select all and then just go up here and do center justified or center alignment rather for that shape. Now, we need to establish the center point with some uh, pa some guides here. So I'm gonna put it in free transform by pressing command T and then press command or control R to bring up your rulers. So I'm gonna drag a guide out, vertical and horizontal guide outs and it'll just snap to the center of the graphic. There it is. Got one too many here, there we go. So now what I wanna do is I've got the center established here. Going to nudge it over to the right. If you hold down the shift key and hit the left or the right arrow four times and nudge it over. Now we're gonna put this object into step and repeat mode. Now I'm gonna go ahead and activate it as a selection. I'm just gonna command click right on the layer, loads it as an active selection. Because if I don't do that, it's gonna create a new layer every time I do a repeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and press option command T, puts it in step and repeat mode. I'm gonna take the center target right here for this graphic and slide it back over to that those guides crosshairs where those guides are crossing here, where the original center was. Then we're just gonna go over here and just hold down the shift key and just give it a nudge over. Don't even have to hold down the shift key. You can just give it a nudge over and you can see how it offsets that circle. Press enter. Now I'm gonna hold down shift option command and then press T over and over again and it's going to start to loop around. Now I'm not gonna go completely all the way around, stop from right about there, so it has a little bit more variation going on around the shape. So there is my shape in the background, or in the uh, floating in the air. Now of course in the original poster it had a glow around it, so I'm gonna go ahead and add an outer glow to this. Just double click on the layer and add an outer glow layer style. And let's go ahead and use a similar color to the graphic itself. We'll change the blend mode to hard light to give it a much more harsh glow. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. I'll give it a little bit more of a teal look. There we go. Matching the overall graphic. There we go. So let's go ahead and turn the guides off. We no longer need those. I'm just gonna press command colon or semicolon. Now let's make a Duplicate of this layer, I'm gonna press Command J, makes a duplicate of that spirograph layer, and we're gonna take this and scale it down so it's an inner shape. So again, hold down the Shift key and the Option key and drag and scale the object in proportionately. There we go. Looking pretty good. Now, a couple last minute things to add here, just got a couple of last minute steps is there, there was a grid background in the original poster. So we're gonna actually, get, let's reselect the background layer and put a new layer above that background layer and go ahead and give it a base color fill of gray. Now to make the grid, I'm just gonna make a new document real quick and we're gonna set it or set the uh, size to 50 pixels by 50 pixels at 100 pixels per inch. So it gives me this small square. So, I'm going to take the rectangular marquee tool, make a selection of the entire document. Now with this, the selection tool still selected, I'm just going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to hit the down arrow two times and then the right arrow two times. Nudges that, offsets that selection a little bit. So we're going to go and select inverse and we'll create a new blank layer in here and go ahead and fill this layer with white. So press um, shift delete or shift backspace and we'll choose white in here and click OK. And then we'll go ahead and turn off that background layer. The original background layer was white, so all we have is that white sliver 
on the top and left side of this graphic. So we'll go ahead and define that as a pattern. So go under Edit and choose Define Pattern. Give it a name if you like, and there it is. So it's just that white little sliver in that image. If I turn it off, you can see it right on the side there. So we've defined it. We're going to apply it to this layer as a layer style. So with the gray filled layer selected, we're going to go into the layer style menu and into the menu and go to here and choose Pattern Overlay. And inside the pattern menu, we should find it. It's the very last item we defined right there. There's the grid. Now, the reason why I like to do this as a layer style is it allows me to scale the grid instead of just doing a standard fill. So I'm going to set this to 25, and it gives us that nice tiny grid there. Now, before we hit OK here, we need to get rid of that gray in the background. So I'm going to go into the blending options here in the layer style menu and go into the advanced blending section under fill opacity and take that and drag it to zero. There's my grid. Click OK. There we have it. Now, it's still applied as a layer style, so I can't apply a color effect to this grid. So I'm just going to create a new blank layer underneath that active layer that contains the grid. I just command click on the new layer icon, then select the layer and merge it down. I'm going to press command or control E and it merges the layer, rasterizing that layer style effect, leaving the transparency where it should. So I'm going to go ahead and resample that color that we use for everything else, this, this teal color here. And on that grid layer, I'm going to lock the transparency up here in the uh, layers panel and just press option delete, fills it in. Now, so it, we can only see part of it, I'm going to go ahead and option click the layer mask icon. It's going to add a hide all layer mask. It's hiding everything on there. I'm going to use a simple gradient, white to transparent. Let's use the foreground to transparent gradient, second one right here. Make sure your foreground color is set to white, and I'm just going to start in the upper right-hand corner area here and just drag down, and it reveals that grid. You can see that really faintly in there. Now, one last effect they added to this is I'm going to go and create a new layer, set my default colors by pressing D on the keyboard, and then we'll go to Filter and go to Render Clouds. And again, I want to use this same layer mask on this clouds layer. So I'm just going to hold down the option key and click on that layer mask and drag it to my target layer. And it basically copies and pastes it. Now to pick up the color of everything else, I'm just going to do a hue saturation directly to this layer of the clouds. So, so click on the layer uh, icon, not the layer mask, but the layer icon. Press command or control U. Brings up hue saturation. We'll do a colorize. Get it close to that same blue teal color. Probably could even nudge that mask up a little bit. And then finally, add my text element. And there we have very similar effect to what you see on that Tron poster using some very simple shape and brush techniques right here inside Photoshop.